you've been having trouble adding algebraic fractions like this or reducing algebraic fractions like this, they're also called rational expressions, then this is the video for you. You see, the thing you might not be connecting the dots with is that greatest common factor is used for reducing and lowest common multiple, well, that's used for finding the common denominators. But finding the LCM and GCF of algebraic expressions can be a, well, a little tricky. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Before we do, I would like to talk real quickly about, well, maybe you were taught how to add fractions like this with cross multiplication. If so, I'm sorry. That's a disservice. You see, if this is all you know, and I were to take that same expression and just add one, you'd have no shot. The thing you got to understand is that to get a common denominator, you need to find the lowest common multiple of the denominators. Three and four, they're relatively prime. There's nothing that they share. There's no factors they share other than one. So their lowest common multiple, well, it's their product. That's why you're multiplying these two together. So we're going to use that idea to find a common denominator between x squared y and 5y squared. So what we need to do in order to find that common denominator is we need to find the lowest common multiple of those two expressions. So what we're going to do is prime factorization. It's hard to think of prime factorization with variables like x squared and y, but we're just going to break them down as far as we can. x squared is x times x, y squared is, well, y times y. Now, what we need to do is, with these factors, we need to make a list. We're first going to make a list of the, well, greatest common factor, which would be y. Y is the factor that is contained in both sets of factors. And then we go ahead and add the leftovers. So what we have is y times x times x times 5 times y. This is our lowest common multiple. Multiplying this all together is what this is the smallest thing that both of these go into. That's going to be our common denominator. Now the trick um, sometimes can be is how do I change uh, this denominator into this with multiplication. A lot of the times people just want to put a 2 here and a 5 there and a 5 here and a 2 there and well that's not math. The way you do it is this this fraction right here is going to be multiplied by the leftovers right over here. You see? If I take x squared y and I multiply by 5y I'm left with 5x squared y squared. Same thing here. 5y squared times the leftovers x squared there you have it. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to multiply this fraction over here by 5y over 5y, and this one over here by x squared over x squared, and there you go. Done. Let's take a look at another example. Now, this one, I added this problem because the most common thing people put is for a common denominator is 16a squared, when it's really 4a squared. Uh, 4a squared goes into itself, and all I need to do is multiply this by a squared. But let's go ahead and take a look at our methods and see that it still works. 4a squared is, well, 2 times 2 times a times a, and 4 is 2 times 2. The thing they have in common, the greatest common factor, is 4. And what's left over? a squared. Multiply that all together, 4a squared, see, just like we said. Now, to make 4 a squared into 4a squared, I just have to multiply by 1. And you see, I told you you had to multiply this by the leftovers. There aren't any leftovers. It's a 1. So I don't need to do anything. But this one over here, I have to multiply this by a squared. So it's going to be uh, 4a squared. Let's go ahead and do that with the uh, numerators. I had to multiply 4b times 1. And I have to multiply 3b times a squared. And that gives me 3a squared b. And we're done. Reducing uses the greatest common factor. We need to find the greatest common factor of all of these terms. We have two terms on the top and one on the bottom. In order to be able to reduce, all of the terms must share a common factor. Well, here they do share a common factor of 2x. So we have 2x times 3x squared. That's, of course, 6x cubed. And we did the same treatment to 4x and 2x squared in the denominator. The 2x, that's what we're going to divide out. We're going to divide that out, and what we're going to be left with is 3x squared plus 2 divided by x. So let's take a look at an ugly one. Now again, we have to have a common factor between all of the terms, and terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs and fraction bars. So our terms are right here. 
Hmm, these three ugly things. Let's go ahead and break them apart. 15, A to the fourth, B cubed. Now, I didn't want to write out four A's and three B's because when I'm looking, I see that if I have seven A's, then four is included in that. So what I did is I broke them all apart into groups of four A's. Like right here, this is A to the seventh, and over here from the denominator, that's A to the seventh. And I saw that there was at least one B in each term, so I didn't break this apart into B times B times B. You see, I broke it into B times B squared. Now, the thing they all have in common is 5A to the fourth times B. You see, they all have a 5, and we're going to divide that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and scratch them off right here. And they all have a A to the fourth, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those as well. And they also all have a B, so I'm going to get rid of those as well. What I'm left with, when I divide out 5a to the 4th times b from this, when I divide that out, what I have is 3b squared. You see? This is, man, this is what the math looks like, and this is more of a visual representation of taking these factors out of the original expression. That's what this is asking us. So I'm left with 3b squared, and over here from 20a to the 7th b, I'm left with 4a cubed. Just took those things out and see what's left. And over here, from the 30a to the 7th b squared, divided out the common, the greatest common factor, 5a to the 4th b, and you're left with 6a cubed b. So, all you gotta do is put those things where they belong, and you're d-o-n-e finished. Question is, though, why can you reduce like that? I mean, well, when I think about order of operations, parentheses go way before everything else, and I don't see parentheses, but this is a group. That's a group right there, and I have to take care of operations for groups before I could do reducing, which is division. Hmm. And since I can't subtract these, I can't just skip it. Well, here's the thing. Division. Well, division's the multiplication by the reciprocal, and the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. Like, 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3. And, well, so since that's the case, you can also switch division and multiplication. And there's a whole bunch of that going on right here. Let's break that apart so we can see. So what I've done here is I went ahead and I factored out the greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator. We saw this in the last slide, that this was the greatest common factor between all of these terms. All right. Now, these are multiplying together. And so are these. Those are multiplying together, right? And these two, well, these are dividing. And division, well, that's multiplication by the reciprocal, and it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply. So we can actually divide these two things together, and that something divided by itself is just one, and it's gone. That's why we can reduce before we take care of the operation in the parentheses, but that's also why you have to have a common factor between all terms. Anyway, if this video was helpful, you could really encourage me to make more by clicking like and subscribing. Leave me a comment, let me know how it went. If you're a teacher and you would like me to make a lesson out of this tutorial video for you, leave me a comment, send me an email. Also, visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com for a lot more information on algebraic fractions and rational equations and all that kind of happy fun stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching.